Greetings to saints in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Happy Sabbath. Uh, shalom, Halekem. Peace be upon you. Um, and, and I mean it when I say peace be upon you. Uh, what I want to, to, to assure you of today, this evening, is that God loves you. And I'm not saying that just because I'm out of things to say or just because it's a politically correct thing to say. I mean it. God loves you. As sinful as you are, even when you are, when you, even when you are shown your sins, it is not so that you may feel worthless. It is because God wants you to turn and follow him. What God has been doing over the years, all these years, all these centuries, is that he has been pleading with humanity. Uh, the world misunderstands why we are here. They think we are here to shape this world, uh, to, to beautify it, to build, to, to, to erect long structures, to build monuments. But what God is here for is to win you and me back to him. That is why he gave us Jesus Christ. What you, what, what you are going to do right now, we are going to read from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 10, 11, 12, and 13. Uh, but before we read, I want us to pray. Gracious Lord, unworthy to stand to speak, to stand to be seen, I submit myself into your hands as slaves, given to the hands of the potter, that you may do with me that which pleases you. Speak to our hearts and minds, comfort us, encourage us, rebuke us, draw us nearer to do to thee, so that we may, being your children, show the world that you really are indeed our Father, and that we are in a good relationship with you, that we are in good terms with you. Bless all those who are watching and listening, and stick to my tongue, uh, because uh, this is not my mother tongue in which I'm preaching. May you, therefore, dear Lord, be here to ensure that those who are listening can get the message clearly. I humbly request that you keep their minds awake and their eyes focused. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. When you read from the book of John, uh, chapter 1, uh, from verse 10, it says, He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did, did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. May God bless the reading of his word now and forever. Amen. Allow me to go through, with you, to go through this text with you for the next 10 or so minutes. What we get here is John. What John is saying is that uh, Jesus came to this world. We know that Jesus was born. He, he, he took the form of humanity. He was born in this world. He became one with humanity. And we know that he spent most of his life in Nazareth, uh, in Galilee, the northern region of Palestine. And uh, what we know is that he spoke the language of the people. He was given the name of the people. Of, of course, the name came from the angel, as we read in Matthew. But it was a name that the Jewish, Jewish people knew, that they were familiar with. So it was not a heavenly invented name at the time. It was a Jewish name at the time. You know, it, it, was, it was a name of the God of the covenant, Yahweh being the Savior, you know, saving. So what we get therefore here is that Jesus came into the world. That's one. When Jesus comes into the world, the world was made through him. He was the agency through which the world was made. Now, when the world, now that the world was made through him, the, the, the author says, or John says, when he comes, the world does not recognize him. Why did the world not recognize Jesus? Because Jesus lived a life that was not in line with the world. First of all, Jesus denied him pleasures that he afforded, that he would have gotten away with. He denied himself those. According to this world, when you have so much power as you have of Jesus, if you could, if you, if you could turn, turn water into wine, I mean, why not open, open, open your cellar, you know, and just, and just sell the wine? And so, when people looked at Jesus, he appeared to them foolish. That how can this guy have so much power, but then he cannot execute, you know? I'm sure you've heard people in this world saying to you, but man, my friend, we can make good money only just come to our meetings on Sabbath. That is how the world views life. But we don't view life like that. So because of that, the world did not then recognize him. He was not uh, one with the world. 
is even though he had made it, even though he came and lived in it. Because when he came to, to the world, it had changed from the state that he had made it. And I want to tell you, by the way, that that is how we know that he loves us. Because Jesus is the only one in the history of mankind or in the history of the universe to come and accept something that is no longer in the state that he had made it originally. Have you ever had, have you ever borrowed someone's stuff and, and, and broken it and then when you gave it back to them and they rejected it and said, no, I can't take it like this. I want it in the same way as it was when I gave it to you. Imagine if God had done that with us, Jesus would not have come here. But what Jesus does is that it's fine. I know that the world is rotten to the core, but I'm going to come and, 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 and be a part of the world. So Jesus then comes, he stays in the world. But the world still does not recognize him, even though he had made it. And then John continues to say, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Jesus did not grow up in Africa or in Europe. Uh, uh, he grew up in Middle East or Asia or Americas or South America. He, he grew up in, in, in Middle East. Where, who, who, who were the Middle Easterners to Jesus? Those were the people who were his own. He spoke their language. He had their name. He lived their life. He ate their food. He wore like them. He lived like them. Went to church like them. But still they did not recognize him as his own. You will remember uh, that uh, when the former... I want to speak... Uh, I just want to, 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 to make an example of the former president, uh, uh, Baba Uzum. Um, there was a time when he went to KZN. And when he went to KZN to, to campaign for, for his party, um, most people who were not even members of his party voted for his party because one of their own had come and spoken to them. It, it is known in, 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 in human society that if you want to get the attention of the people, you speak their language, you dress like them, you, you eat with them, you become one with them. So if, 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 I want, if, if, if you want to solve a problem um, in Botswana, and, and you're most likely to win if you send it to another person who speaks the language, who knows the, 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 the dialects of the people, who knows all the language, the ins and outs. Now, Jesus came like that to simplify his ministry, but still that did not work with Jesus. Still they did not recognize him. It did not, it, he, 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 he did all that, that, that he, he made sure that he lives a life that is acceptable to the Jewish people, even a lonely life. But still, they did not recognize him. They did not receive him. They did not accept him. They rejected him. He tells them, before Abraham was, I was, he comes from the, from, the, from the house of David, still there was not enough. And then John says in verse 12, yet to all, who did receive him to those who believed in his name he gave the right to become the children of God when John says those who receive him those who accepted him by faith those who believed in his name now what does it mean to say those who believed in his name because the name of Jesus is not just a name you know nowadays we, we, we don't we don't understand how the Bible gave names or how, how our father, forefathers gave names because nowadays we just copy names you know if it sounds nice if it sounds uh, poetic then you just copy names you see a name on Instagram and then you give it to your child you see it on Facebook you give it to your child but what we have here is that usually names had a message embedded within them it was not just a name this was a statement to the world because Jesus was what we call in theology a walking hermeneutics in Jesus, the word of God was interpreted. In Jesus, God was saying, this is how I am pleased. In Jesus, God was saying, this is how life should be lived. So therefore, what we get is that in, in, in the name of Jesus, God was communicating to the world. He was saying, I am safe. And this is proof. So those who believed that in his name, those who believed that in his name there is salvation, to those he gave the right to become the children of God. I love how, how my friend uh, Rabbi Danki puts it when he speaks of the name of Jesus. When uh, those who have done Hebrew will know that the name of Jesus is, is Yehoshua or Yeshua. Uh, and it, it, it begins with what we call in English a Y, but we call it a Yod. It's like a, it's like a, it's like, it's like a, a, a comma, and a, like an apostrophe uh, in, 
in, in, in, in, in, in Hebrew. It's, it's a yod. It, uh, so my, my, my friend says um, the significance of the name of Jesus is in the yod because the yod ma ma makes, him, makes his name to be insignificant in, 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 in terms of how one looks at it, but it is bigger in terms of performance. So you get, therefore, a man who has a lowly life, but in terms of what he does, he is very great. So the importance of Jesus is not so much in the name, but in the message of the name. So those who believed in the name, the message that the name portrays, those who believe that God is able to save, that God saves, that God has sent him to save, those he gave the exosias. In the Greek, we call it the exosias. Um, it is called the right here, but it is not only the right per se, but I want to say that it is power and right combined together. What do I mean? You may have a right to do something, but lack the ability to do it. You may have the ability, but lack the right to do it. For instance, everyone, have, you might find that you have an ability to walk into a shop and steal, but you don't have a right to do so. You may have a right to go into the library and read, but you don't have the ability to do so because you are sitting on a wheelchair and there's no ramp to take you inside. So what we get in Exosias is the two combined in that we have the ability through the Holy Spirit and we have the legal right to become the children of God. And in becoming the children of God, that is why, therefore, we are able to go to God and say, Father, we are in need. Because you cannot go to God and ask for the things of God if you're not a child of God. You have to first accept, believe that you are the child of God. Then you may go and accept. And then you may go and request of God. I remember one year when I was younger, uh, we, we were sitting, we were sitting in, in, in one of my uncle's houses. Um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was it was the 31st of January. I remember it as if it was yesterday. You know, he had bought all the crickets uh, and, 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 and he was dividing them among us children. But myself and my other brother who sat there, uh, we, we sat and I noticed, I remember I, noticing that when he was dividing this time, he was not dividing as he usually had done before. He was only giving to his biological children now. He was not giving them to us. And then when he had done dividing, when there was nothing left in the back from, where, from, 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 from which he took the, 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 the crickets, then he says, um, every father is the responsibility to take care of their children. I hated him for years after that until I understood what he meant. Yes, it may have come on, on, on the basis of Ubuntu, it may have come across as, as an insult, but I understood what he meant. He, what he meant was, look, you don't have a right to hate me for not taking care of you. I'm not your father. I'm not responsible for you. So what Jesus is saying here is that you have a right to go to God and say, look, I've lived, believed. I accept you. I'm going through this world, I have pain in my life, I'm faced with challenges, that, but I have a father like you, then you can claim the promises that are given in the word of God. Jesus gave us that right. It's a legal right. You can pray anywhere, whether naked, whether dressed, being arrested, wherever you are, you have the right to become the child of God. It has been given to us by Jesus. Those who accept him, those who say it's fine, God can give us instruction. Jesus can tell us what to do. Just can tell us the how in terms of living our lives. Those who have done that, those who have believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. I want to tell you, child of God, that before you hate people, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to appeal with you that some of the people that you are expecting much from are not your legal guardian. They are not rightfully the ones who are supposed to take care of your needs. There is one who is supposed to take care of your needs. And that is God above. We need to move away from investing in humanity. Many of us have enemies that we wouldn't be having had we not expected so much from them instead of God. Whoever comes into your life to make, to, to make an impact, it is because God has allowed. And I want to appeal with you, if you're holding a grudge because someone failed you, you must know, child of God, that it shouldn't be that way. Um, you know, when you, when, you, <laughs> when you read in the book of, in the book of uh, in, in, when you read in Hebrew, there's what we call a cohortative form. Like a cohortative form in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a self-reflexive mode. What happens is you, you speak um, of something that you wish to do or you express the will, but it, it depends on you or your abilities. That's why it's self-reflexive. Like you, you speak of what you can do, what you will do. Like I, I will love you to the end. 
I would be faithful to you to the end. But when, when, what, what we have done as human beings is that we have taken that to mean a promise. And I want to tell you that when it's human beings who are saying that, it is just a wish. It only becomes a promise when it is God. So this father is not like the human fathers who may promise us, who may make wishes in the, languages of, in the language of a promise and sound like they've promised us the world, whereas they can't be there to fulfill the promise. You know that whoever that has promised you, whoever is a human being that has promised you, believe me, the day that the, the, the promise has to be fulfilled may come and they may not be able to fulfill it. If someone takes money from you and they say they will return it to you, it is likely. Look at what's happening now. Imagine, what plans did we have at the beginning of the year? We can't, we can't keep up with them now. We can't fulfill the promises we made because COVID came. We had no idea. But this is a different father who is not at the midst of circumstances for him to operate. If circumstances don't allow him to operate, he exercises his authority above them. And as he exercises his authority above them, and history has told us that when they got to the sea, to the Red Sea, we remember what happened? They got to the Red Sea. What happened when they got to the Red Sea? He exercised his authority. They had no boat. He did not make them swim. He just departed. He just rather caused the water to part. Why? Because God does not negotiate the circumstances. This is the, 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 a different father. And, 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 and it's very important also to note that the, the, the way that John uses his words here is very important. Usually, there is a way in which John speaks. He speaks of son and he also speaks of children. Uh, for instance, when he wrote later on, he spoke, he spoke of us being the sons, you know. Uh, but what is very what, 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 what is interesting here is that he speaks of us as being children. And John is very particular for a reason. Because when you speak of sons, according to John, when he speaks of son, he speaks of a title of honor. Jesus is the son. Is a title of honor. He has, he, has, he, has, he has secured the title. He has earned respect. He is the son, the heir. But he doesn't call us the sons. He calls us the children because we are still learning. You know, we are still likely to make mistakes, but we are the children of God. So we are making mistakes in the fold. We are likely, we are, we, so therefore as children, it's okay to be corrected. It's okay to be reprimanded. It's okay to, to come back home. You know, there are people who don't come back home when they've done something wrong. And is because they don't understand what it means to be a child. I remember growing up, whenever I done something wrong and sometimes I was tempted to go and sleep in other people's houses, there was a question that came, where are you going to sleep? Is that your home? And I want to ask you, if you are running away from God because you have offended him, where are you sleeping, child of God? Because this is your home. To whom do you speak to? Where are you getting your supply for your needs? Who is taking care of your needs if you don't come and ask before the Father? You know, um, the, the, my, 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 one of my cousins, was very naughty. So every time, before, towards the end of the year, uh, when, when his father was about to come back from Johannesburg, because he only came back twice a year uh, in, 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 uh, during the Easter's and also for Christmas, they were made to write letters. He was very naughty. And because he was very naughty, when they were writing letters, you would find him outside. And, and then one day when I, when, when I went, um, I found him outside. And then, and then I asked him, and then he told me, no, I can't, they're writing the letters to my father. They're asking of the gifts from my father. And then the, ma and the mother came out, and he, she shouted at him, and she was like, go, I, I can't say it now, but she was very harsh, telling him to go back inside to write the letter. And he was like, but why should I write the letter? I've not been a good child. And then he said, but that's not, that's, that's, that's not your decision to make. This is your father. If you don't ask for my father, where are you going to ask for? Are you going to sit here and think about how undeserving you are, or you are going to go to your father and tell him of your needs? And I want to say to you, child of God, you cannot sit and think of how undeserving you are instead of thinking of, the of what the Father can do for you. Many don't pray because they think they're undeserving. And the more you don't pray, the more you break the, 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 the communication between yourself and the Father. And before you know it, He's no longer your Father in the way that you see Him because you have created the barrier. But I want to assure you today that He is your Father. And even when in John 14, Jesus was promising them what He promised them, as we shall see uh, to, to, tomorrow when, when, when we go through the divine service, it was on the basis of this legality that they have a right now to go to the Father and claim him. Because to those who believed, those who accepted him, those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. He gave the right to become the children of God. Not the children born of natural descent, nor of human decision. You know what I discovered growing up is that there are many children who are born, it's a sad story, but it's the truth and the reality, that there are many children who are, not, who are born, but they are not planned for. And that is natural descent. And 
some are born out of husband's decision without necessarily the capacity to take care of them. One wants to have offsprings, but they have not prepared. God, in fact, the reason that you have, you have Genesis, Genesis 1 and God creating from, from verse 1, uh, what, you, what, you, what you are hearing there is God preparing for man. The reason that God told the ground to show up dry, it was so that he could prepare the sphere of existence for man. The reason he told the vegetation to come out is he was preparing it for man. What I'm saying is, we have been prepared for as the children of God. We are not randomly given birth to. The plan of salvation is older. There is a lot that God has to offer us as his children Then we have to gain outside the fold. To those who believed, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children not born out of mistake. Um, children that were planned for. Children that have had a solid plan of salvation being prepared for them. And you and I are one of those children who have believed. And may God bless you. And may God come to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we say, we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the assurance that we are your children. We do want to behave like your children, to speak like your children, to think like your children. We therefore ask for the power of the Holy Spirit, that he may indwell us, so that he may transform us to be like Jesus Christ. We want to be holy, we want to be righteous. Please bless us with that mind that was also in Jesus Christ, so that we may be humble, so that we may be teachable, so that we may take instruction. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen.